uh, by the politicians, by the pundits, by the commissioners themselves in our EBC that drive the cost of election. Take a look. For a country notorious for fierce contest of poll outcome across nearly all elective seats, the deployment of modern technology in elections, right from the voter registration and identification to transmission of results, has become inevitable. And with it, big financial commitments for electoral agency IEBC, which for the purpose of next year's general election is demanding some 40 billion against the 26.2 billion shillings the Treasury is willing to allocate the Commission. Yet therein has been a major fiasco for the Commission, severally caught up in fierce procurement disputes, stirring local and international multi-billion firms eyeing the IEBC billions in critical tenders preceding the polls. There's an external aspect to uh, the procurement process. But then there's an internal aspect in which we are having uh, procurement processes which are um, not transparent, uh, which are being done too late in the day, uh, which are, um, um, which many stakeholders are not consulted. On 3rd September, the Public Procurement Administration and Review Board cancelled an IEBC tender for supply, delivery and maintenance of the Kenya Integrated Election Management System KIEMS for next year's polls over IEBC's failure to indicate in its tender documents the preference for margins in favour of local and citizen contractors as contemplated in law. The new application deadline being the 7th of October, among most critical IEBC tenders up for grabs, is one for the supply of non-strategic general election material on a three-year contract, and another for media planning, buying, production services, and media monitoring. Among those recently closed and awaiting finalization and award of contracts, is one for the supply of voter registration material on a three-year contract and another for the supply and delivery of ballot papers, register of voters and statutory election results declaration forms. But will this escape the notorious bottleneck of contest at the Procurement Review Board or the courts? We are committed to ensuring that all procurements are done in a transparent manner right from the time the bids go out up to the bid opening it's done in public the media are invited and uh, then there is the judicial system if there is anybody aggrieved they have a right to complain such uh, you know legal processes must not be allowed to delay the procurement of the requisite electoral materials um, that uh, the IBC requires to prepare sufficiently for elections. We'd also urge the courts at this point in time that when such cases are brought before it, because they are bound to come anyway, uh, that those such cases are expedited. Yet IEBC too has been on the radar of the Auditor General over accountability queries. In 2017, for instance, the Auditor General raised a red flag over general expenditures totaling 9.5 billion shillings relating to the procurement of such items as data bundles for results transmission, commission badges, external batteries for BVR kits, gas lamp mantles, modems and SIM cards. Lots of queries that have severally seen the commission summoned by the National Assembly Public Accounts Committee since the 2017 polls. Deputy. But could it as well be a case of the IEBC being the weak link in the procurement chain? Or is it a case of vested interests to shoot procurement costs? The Kenyan election is expensive, as I mentioned, and the Commission has said this before many times because of the legal regime which we have. And uh, if you look at our budget, it's actually activity based. It is, uh, you need so many temporary staff, each earning 1,000 each, it gives you this figure. The public themselves, they are entitled to a level of transparency over this process. So the idea that uh, the Commission is required to en ensure public is aware of each part of the process is critical for observers. And that's one of the reasons why we are keeping a very keen eye on some of these processes. What happened last time is that uh, the, the, the Commission the IBC Commission and the Secretariat, they were pulling in different ways. So the Secretariat, I think it disregarded the, the commissioners and went ahead and did procurement and, and, and procured uh, those, those, those kits. 
that came and some of them were, were, were not even uh, uh, functioning. We also have uh, developed as a commission, we have developed our policy and manuals which guide the procurement processes. And if an officer of the commission goes against what is provided for in the law, they take responsibility. And with the 2022 polls promising to be fiercely contested across most elective seats, and the country reeling from the 2017 nullification of President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election, partly over some procurement flows. No doubt IEBC remains on the spotlight as the clock ticks fast to the 2022 polls. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News. Well, thanks, uh, Murimi, for that report. And definitely we're looking back at a time that the world has really progressed. We're starting in 2010, but we're in 2021, projecting 2022, when things are completely different. But we have to go back for us to learn what's coming up in the future because the IBC is already asking for more money. So let's break down the figures for you now and show you how much we have been spending for the last few years. So we begin in 2010. This is very important because it, everyone can recall this divisive referendum. Now in 2010, the cost of uh, the referendum was 10 billion shillings. The cost per vote it was measured uh, on the number of voters was 794 shillings per ballot per head. Every voter spent 794. The number of registered voters during the referendum were 12.6 million voters. Now, this number has subsequently increased, as you will see in the next slide, because the voters are always uh, registered afresh and always, always there are new people coming in, people turning 18 years old and being eligible to vote. So let's take you to 2013 general election won by Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto. The cost of that election was 36 billion shillings. Cost per head was 2,500, which incidentally is the average that Kenya spends per voter in every election. The number of registered voters increased to 14.4 million. That uh, those are the number of people who voted in that election won by Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto. Then we jump to the next election, also won by the pair, 2017 to 2018 general election. Now the cost will do a cumulative cost because remember, 26th of November, there was a repeat election after the first election was nullified by the court. Now that will also be a factor that plays in, in the cost drivers of the election, as we'll explain later. So the cumulative cost in that election, prolonged election, was 60 billion shillings, looking at the money that was spent also in court. The cost per head went slightly up with 46 shillings from 2013 to 246 shillings per head. So the increase at that time was 46 shillings per voter. Now the number of voters definitely had to increase new registered voters, 19.6 million shillings. But that's not the end. Let's take a look at the second slide because you're learning something new from this. The 2022 general election, the IBC already says that they will need 40.9 billion shillings to run this election. Now the cost per vote, however, is going to go down by about 960 shillings compared to 2017, 2018. Now this is a small mistake here. We said it's an increase, but actually it's a decrease of 960 shillings for every voter who will be voting in that election. And the IBC projects that there will be 25 million voters now, an increase of about 6 million voters in the next general election. So this is a projection of 2022 election based on what the IBC is asking. Let's take a look at uh, the other factors that now uh, will, will, will define this election. And as I said, the cost is 2,500 shillings per voter. That's the amount of money that the IBC will be spending on each head the 25 million once the election is called. And our last slide, because we'll be showing you more of comparative study, but I just want to show you one before I get back to Sophia. Now, this is a comparative regional study, but we'll go out of the region to Papua New Guinea, and you realize that the highest, um, the highest expenditure we have seen or from our research was actually the United States. We'll be showing you in the other slides, but it comes second, Papua New Guinea. Then Kenya is the third highest in the globe with an average of 2,500 hundred shillings per head. So how does it compare to the region? We'll be showing you that in the next slides. But first, back to Sophia. Thank you very much, Ken, for that breakdown. Just really putting into perspective for us why Kenya's elections are so expensive. And uh, just that one example there, that the second highest ranking in the world after Papua New Guinea. And you're talking about other more developed democracies, bigger populations, uh, but yet ours, 2,000, uh, over 2,000 shillings, uh, 500 